You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale: Jesse's Path. So uh, some of my commenters uh, told me that there's not that much left, so I'm gonna go ahead and probably f just finish up this chapter. So guys, hope you enjoy, and let's jump right back into it, shall we? Wolf walks into a bar. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. The monkey squeaks. Sh the monkey squeaks. Squeaks really. I shoot a baffled look to Bulgar, who shrugs. Uh, hello. Pleasure to meet you. No, the pleasure's all mine. Young man, that was the most entertaining show I've experienced in a very long time. Walter steps closer, tilting his head to examine me. To examine me. As if a present primate partner le leans out nearer still, sniffing at my scent. It was a bit violent, though. Which is fine for the jaded city crowds, but I won't fly in the rural areas. I have to tone down that attack scene. He examines me up and down with casual appraisal. I feel like a prize pony on display. Now, how did you get this way? Were you born... wolfish? Can't possibly be a parlor trick, can it? There's no costume provisions good enough to create your look. Despite the monkey, something tells me this man may be a few bananas short of a bushel. Are you... well, you're taking this mm, quite in stride. Oh, what was that? Are you suggesting I should be scared? Alter pulls up next to me and gestures, gra gestures grandly as if life is but one big show. Haha, <laughs> my boy! I've served at a hungry lion's mob, and you're trampled by a rampaging elephant! I think I can handle sharing a drink with a wolf, man, particularly one so tame as yourself. With an arched brow, Bulgaria gives Walter his coffee. Two contenders vying for the title of most manly adventurer. Has the barkeep finally met his match? Bulgaria clears his throat. He thinks the lad be saying that it's not every day you see a werewolf. Ah, when you're traveling an entertainer like me, you've seen it all, so called monsters of all sorts. The moon child of Liverpool, the pig-headed woman of Dundee. It turned out to be just like the rest of us, or more or less. I had such a fairground chimeras are no more than clean-shaven beers. Bears, more often not. This air, sir, is real magic. Alto reads the earnestness on Bulgar's face and reluctantly continues. Why, let I mention it was right here in Arctic Craig that my carrier took off. But before I performed here, I was not but a two-bit clown, and I met this lady in... As Walter's words trail off, Bulgar and I exchange a look. Well, the trade sequence and all that, but she sure showed me a thing or two. After that, nothing really surprised me anymore. Especially not in this town, haha. <laughs> Try it again. Haha! Hey, it is good to be back. Expectantly, Walter waits for his enthusiasm to catch on, but Bulgar and I are, so, are no naive audience, and I'm in no mood to be entertained. I really must be going. Dawn is breaking, and you know how it is. Difficult to hide from roving mobs in broad daylight and all that. Oh. I stand up to leave, but Walter swiftly positions himself between me and the door. Y yes, such boorish behavior, mobs. The mystical shouldn't phase, it should amaze. And sir, I am amazed. You and your girl have impressive show. Her transfiguration stunt was unbeatable. <clears throat> I believe he was getting back to his girl now. Yeah, I need to return this. The tattered dress feels fragile in my paws. Its sorry state makes wondrous Walter grimace. Oh my! Oh, yes, entertainer is nothing but a proper costume. Ever the gentleman, gentle wolf, to return it to her. Please allow my friend to make sure the coast is clear. Alter opens the door a fraction, and the monkey darts out of the out of the pub. Meanwhile, the meanwhile the showman's body continues to block my exit. You're a monkey. It's uh well trained. The best! We just little nap up like 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 uh, we just little nap up like old bunny parts and have him ride around on a Frenchie, striking terror into the hearts of the monarchs, and melting the hearts of everyone else. Just like the real Napoleon, little guy loves being the center of attention, lives in the same lap of luxury as his namesake too. Walter winks at me, doing the opposite of putting me at ease. Hey, my primate Finn is a member of the troop, just like any other, with all the benefits that entails, and rest assured, I treat my troop as I treat my dearest family. Yeah, I think we can see where this is going. Entertainer gives me a hearty slap, which bounces off me with hardly a notice. Has he ever stopped talking? I know you have other things on your mind, but surely that big snout of yours can smell the opportunity. Imagine it, the singing werewolf and her... her... can you play an instrument? Try as I might, I still can't tell if Wondrous Walter is an affable, eccentric con, a con artist or just plain fool. 
Prophecy is all three. I'm guessing all three. I am, uh... I used to play the flute. A werewolf? A flautist? Eh, we'll work on that. Loki scampers back inside and returns to his perch with a single loud screech, which Walter gleefully tra helpfully translates. That's the all clear! I don't care if the whole town is waiting for me outside the door at this point. I've had enough. All right, thanks for everything, Bogatter, and uh, uh, thank you for the kind words, Mr. Um, Wondrous. Walter, please! Here, take my card! With a flourish of his hands, Walter magically produces two small cards of paper. He places them in my coat pocket before finally stepping aside. One for you and one for the dazzling missus. Please, get in touch as soon as possible. This is an act we've got to tour with right away before anyone else steals your secrets. Hey, we don't need any more wolf people terrorizing Bonnie Scotland. Remember your medicine, lad, and good luck. The monkey squeaks shrilly in agreement. I nod, check for both vials, and slip outside without looking back. Hmm. Ooh, it is daytime, okay. Hmm. My breath comes in quick, shallow pants as I approach Jesse's makeshift den. With the sun rising and little cover between here and the town, my best bet to avoid being spotted was to run most of the way back. The optimist in me wonders if the townsfolk have given up their hunt. My soldier instincts say otherwise. Never let your guard down, Malcolm. You can't be too careful. When I reach the boulder underneath which we rested last night, Jesse is nowhere to be seen. I call out in an urgent whisper. Jesse, it's me, Malcolm! On the scent, okay. There's no response. Damn it! I was off my head to try and steal a moment of peace of the stag and nanny. Now she's gone off to who knows where. Or worse, been taken. I lay on the ground, tired, spent, and worried. What do I do? What's next? Just to wait here. If she's able to return, hopefully. I sigh and look at the red dress in my fist. The shoddy prize of my venture. Not just shredded, but filthy from the trek now, too. But still smells faintly of her perfume. The smell that permeates the den as well. I rouse myself and begin snuffling at the edges of our nest. To the south, I find what I am looking for. An invisible trail left behind for the rare sniffer that can detect it. My sniffer. Clever girl. Hmm, what is she doing? Ooh, pretty. Oh, I heard a noise. That was weird. I might have been the game. The morning fog settles thick here, but it doesn't obscure the way. My path zigs and zags with the scent, like Pastor Ned returning to church after a few too many of the stag and nanny. I must look more beast. I must look more beast than man, shambling about the glen on all fours. It comes easily, feels natural somehow. Instinct has taken over. My body may as well be an extension of my snout. Tracking down Jesse is all that matters. Hmm. Where is she? God, that rock looks so odd. Perched like it's like a giant, it's like a giant rock splinter sticking out of the ground. Malcolm. The soft, distant voice jolts me out of my trance. Jesse. Thank goodness she is all right. My heart leaps and I bound toward the sound of her voice. Malcolm, wait! Stop! The shout startles me, stopping me in my tracks. I look around for danger, but only see Jesse's form gingerly making her way toward me through the mist. Then I glint a few steps away, it catches my eyes. Oh, shit. Cravens, Malcolm, I've been worried sick. So have I. We hug each other tightly and don't want to let go. I'm sorry. I thought I could, well, I don't know what I was thinking. What's happening here? Traps? Has it come to this, really? Yes. Was it long ago that band came through? I had to abandon our den. I watched them from atop the hill. Mrs. Lankham's husband, the trapper, was leading them. A good tracker, and... Her eyes cloud over as her voice trails off. And... I think I saw my father with them. My stomach turns upside down. To be hunted by your own flesh and blood. My gosh, Jesse, I'm so sorry. We need to leave, Malcolm. We're walking targets out the open here. This group, they're, well, they're on a mission, I can tell. When I woke up, you weren't there. And then when I saw them, I thought... Jesse's eyes tear up and my heart breaks for both of us. The, wor the worst. No, goodness, no. I'm sorry I scared you. I couldn't sleep and I didn't want to worry you. So I slipped away to get this. 
I had clenched my paw to reveal the crumpled ball of red inside, and Jesse's eyes go wide. Malcolm, you mangy gawk! You risked life and limb for whatever scraps were left of my dress! When she puts it that way, it does sound quite foolhardy. I shrug bashfully as she takes the clothes from my hand. Just thought it might help, and I know it's your favorite ensemble. It resembles a handful of ribbons more than a dress. Ugh, I we need a brand new ensemble when all this is over. Not even Marion could mend this mess. Won't you try it on? Here, now, are you off your head? I'm not sure these rags would ever hang, would even hang from my shoulders anymore. I know, I know, but it was some trouble to find them. It can't hurt to try. Truthfully, I'm skeptical as well, but I want Jesse to exhaust every option before I mention what's in my pocket. I have all the solution. Oh god, barely covering her. Reluctantly, Jessie slips into what remains of the dress and closes her eyes, concentrating. I can hear her, exa her exasperation in every huff and grunt she makes. After a few moments pass and nothing changes, I take Jessie's paw, still unsure if my presence helps or hinders. Again, I can feel the energy we're, we're swirling around us, but try as we might, it doesn't respond. Malcolm! I appreciate you risking everything to get this, but it's just no use. A spark inside me, it's still missing. I can't. I just can't put it into words. I'm stuck. I'm nervous. I'm scared. We're being hunted, Malcolm. We have to hide right away. But where? There's nowhere to hide. Not anymore. Not within this valley or among the civilization beyond. We both sigh. Jesse with defeat, and me from carrying the burden of what I must tell her. Your dress. I got it from Alana. Jesse brightens. You saw Alana? What did she say? Can she help us? She gave me these. I pull the vials out of my pocket. The shimmering blue liquid is a stark contrast to the fire of Jesse's red dress. Both colors reflect in Jesse's apprehensive eyes. No. I understand. Alana said you turned the antidote down before, but it's alright to change your mind. The situation has changed. People know now. They're after you. After us. No, Malcolm, you don't understand. I already made my choice. I told Alana that this isn't something I'm willing to give up. Not now. Not ever. Nothing's changed. Jessie's conviction is unwavering, even in the face of danger. It only makes me admire her more. I rally my own courage and put away the potions. Very well. We'll figure out something else. Her expression softens, turning concerned. Malcolm, wait! This, this is my choice. It doesn't have to be yours. You didn't ask to be like this. No, I didn't. But it's a gift. I won't throw it away just because of a few borers don't like how we look. I leave much unsaid. How liberated I feel. How being like this lets me connect with Jesse on such an intimate level. After four years in the heart of peril, I'm no longer worried. Even if I know I should be. The weight is lifted now that the blue liquid is out of sight. Jesse smiles, hopeful. All right, we'll need to hide until this all blows over. Then we'll... Hold on, it could take days, weeks. What about Agnes? Grand must already be terribly distressed. How was she managing my absence? We'll hide at her place then. Eh? I'd rather not drag Gran into this, but perhaps Jesse is onto something. Gran already knows about Jesse's condition and has proven to be an ally. The last place people would look is right under their noses. If only Gran could keep her lips sealed around the whist around the whist guild. As I was saying, once everything blows over, we'll figure out why I can't transform and get whatever help we need. After all, I can't be a starlet looking like this. Bless Jesse for keeping her dream alive, even when she thinks her ship has sailed. Little does she know. Funny you mention that because I, uh, I bumped into Walter, the wondrous one. You won't believe this, but. He said he was impressed by your act. I expect Jessie to show shock, elation, horror, some kind of reaction to the news, but she seems distracted by something in the fog down the glen. Jessie? They're here. I sniff the air, detecting the faintest scent of man. They must be far away, unless they're approaching from downwind. Malcolm, run! Is this... is this it? This, damn it! <laughs> oh, God! 
It's so good. I love it so much. To be concluded. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, we're going back. I'm going to save that. All right, I'm going to save that right there. Sent. Damn, nothing better happened to nothing better happened to her. Nothing. I'm going to tear you people apart. I'm a wolf man now. I got wolf powers. I got wolf powers. <laughs> Damn, Malcolm must be imposing looking. Hmm. I mean, maybe if you, like, talk, that'll freak them out. Hmm. You guys need to get to running. A mob is, uh... A mob is not... A mob is, uh, prone to rash action and poor decision-making. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been, for right now at least, the last episode of Jesse's Path. Uh, I'm gonna be... Going back to Grace after this, but thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!